Good evening, dear colleagues. I chose the topic for this speech now some weeks ago. Indeed, it's one that I've recycled several times since completing my MA. However, the topic of my speech, pa air passenger rights, I did think it over twice whether or not it is indeed imp appropriate given the terrible events that unfolded yesterday in the French Alps when the German wings aircraft bound for Dusseldorf from Barcelona so tragically crashed leading to the loss of 144 passenger lives and six crew. Then I thought no, the show must go on, and whilst we will remember them and the, the tragic loss that their families and loved ones have felt, I felt that this, given that we are in Brussels, this topic is indeed one of importance, and for many of you who will go on to work in the European institutions, it is indeed one, especially in the Commission, that you will come up against time and time again, I have no doubt. So you might be wondering where the inspiration from the speech on air passenger rights actually came from. Well, that's a very good question. The whole Shazam started now three, three and a half years ago when I was studying for my undergraduate degree at the University of Manchester. I was on uh, my Erasmus year, well, the second part of my Erasmus year. I was studying in the University of Freiburg in Germany and I wanted to go and visit my dad. Now, my dad's been living in Paris for many years now, seeing as how he works there with the nuclear authorities. And um, the idea was to fly from Stuttgart to Paris with Air France. Should have been a very simple journey, if only it had unfolded that way. The night before I set off uh, to make my way to France, I received an email from Air France saying that my flight had unfortunately been cancelled due to technical problems with the aircraft. Now, me being a drunk Erasmus student, didn't really think much about that. They said that they had moved me on to the next uh, available flight, and I was quite happy with that. It was only le it only left some four hours later than the original flight did. It was only when I reached Paris, and after speaking to my father, that I realised that there could actually be a claim for compensation in this and in the great British tradition of claiming compensation as we do I thought why the hell not that'll be some extra beer money for my Erasmus so I did a bit of research about it and since as as I was always quite interested in European affairs anyways I thought well why not let's um Let's see what happens. So I wrote off a very beautifully worded email to Air France explaining the perils that had unfolded me and the severe inconvenience that I'd experienced as the cause of this four-hour delay, saying that I'd missed my fictitious meeting in Paris that was supposed to have taken place at four o'clock, etc., etc., etc. I'm sure you know where I'm going with this. But the long and short of it is that under the regulation set down by the European Commission, namely Regulation 261-2004, I was able to claim some compensation. Now, to give the reg this regulation its full name, it's the Regulation on Establishing Common Rules on Compensation and Assistance to Passengers, that in the event of being denied boarding and or their flight being cancelled or delayed by a long period of time are entitled to receive compensation. This regulation came into force on the 17th of February 2005 when it repealed its predecessor regulation 295 slash 91. But I'm sure we don't need to go into so many boring commission-like details. I thought you may be asking, what did this, in fact, mean for me? Well, 
It meant that six weeks later, as is the statutory period of time, I received a very nice and apologetic email from Air France offering me either 300 euros compensation or a 250 euro flight voucher. And I thought, well, I was a cash-strapped Erasmus student, so I'm sure you're all able to guess which option I went for. I took the money and ran. But this whole culture of compensation did lead me on to thinking later, is this actually healthy for our European economy? Is this going to help to boost competitiveness amongst member states, amongst airlines? Because the criteria set down by the Commission for being able or being entitled to claim compensation are in fact not as stringent as one might think. In order to be eligible to claim compensation, one either has to be denied boarding by some fault of the airline, the flight has been cancelled due to technical reasons, not due to acts of God, as what the airlines like to know, or they like to call it, or to me and you, bad weather. And in the event of a delay or rerouting, if the plane arrives in its final at its final destination later than three hours later than the scheduled arrival time, then the passenger shall, by European law, be entitled to claim the statutory compensation. The amount of compensation offered depends upon the length of the flight and it's fair to say that a flight starting outside of the European Union um, that is more than 500, uh, 5,000 sorry, kilometers in length, then one would be entitled to claim the maximum statutory compensation of 500 euros per passenger. This is no mean sum, and especially when you think that an airline may, on grounds of safety, cancel or delay an aircraft because of a broken or faulty part, only to be hit by a 500 euro sum per passenger on a plane that may contain up to 350 passengers. With this in mind, we might ask ourselves, do all the airlines actually play ball? Are they all good boys and do they all fess up the amount of money? Well, I can tell you they don't. The famous Irish entrepreneur, Mr. Michael O'Leary, well known for his exploits with the famous budget airline Ryanair, is a particularly bad payer of compensation. Ryanair consistently failed to pay compensation in instances where it was indeed due. And this was only remedied once they lost an appeal in the Irish High Court against a passenger, which subsequently meant that they had to backdate all of their payments to other passengers who had also claimed similar compensation. In the United Kingdom, we've also seen similar examples with the airline Jet2, who are currently involved in a series of uh, complex litigations with passengers in the United Kingdom. Uh, they even said that the outcome of this uh, court case would decide their future and if they have to pay, pay out all of this compensation that they will probably go bankrupt. We feel sorry for them but that's the way it is. They are by law bound to pay this compensation and therefore I think that they should indeed cough up said sum of money. It's a level playing field and all airlines are bound to play by the same rules. Some people might say that yes, we find ourselves on somewhat shaky ground when we everybody is coming together and trying to claim compensation off one poor airline which might send them out of business. However, the rules are the same for everybody and I really urge all airlines to abide by them. Therefore, this will create a level, market, a level playing field on the market and 
airlines will be able to compete against each other on a fair basis, which after all is one of the founding cornerstones of the European Union and its principle of the internal market. I think I've taken up uh, enough of your time uh, with my rather droll monologue about air passenger rights. However, I will leave you to mull it over yourselves and perhaps you can decide whether you think on whether you think it is or it is not an obligation that the airlines should fulfill. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you very much for your attention and I wish you all a pleasant evening and I'll see you all in the pub. Thank you very much.